Hello, Electro Jeweler Jordan here, and today we're going to talk about anodes. Let's get right into it. In front of me, you'll see a selection of anodes that you probably have run into. Now, there are pros and cons to each of these, but I'm going to show you why some are much better choices than others. Your choice of anode might not seem like a big deal, but it will probably shape the way you do electroforming and ultimately how successful you are at electroform. It may seem counterintuitive, but pure copper is not a good choice for an anode. It releases too much copper into your solution, causing copper oversaturation. These next two commonly used anodes are made of pure copper. While they'll work initially, in the long run they'll give poor results. Copper deoxidized with phosphorus and proper chloride levels slow things down a bit, making your solution work properly. While you can buy copper deoxidized with phosphorus from plating supply companies, usually the minimum orders are quite high, starting at 20 to 40 pounds. Containing phosphorus, inexpensive and easy to source, rigid copper tubing and flexible copper tubing are by far the best choice for small-scale electroformers like you. When sourcing copper tubing, you may notice that two lengths of tubing may be the same length and diameter, but priced differently. This is due to wall thickness. The thickness may be printed on the pipe in numbers, color-coded, or stated in the manufacturer's description or website. This chart will help you to save money and make the best purchasing decision, and is also available on our website. I hope this helped. Please like and subscribe. If you're bright and or curious or you need electroforming supplies or information, please visit our website below. And remember, keep on plating and creating.